Hi, my name is Elizabeth Gilliland Rands. I'm a teacher, a doctor who wrote her dissertation on Jane Austen adaptations, the author of the Austen University Mystery Series, and today I want to talk to you about Mr. Darcy's white shirt. In the 1995 BBC television miniseries, writer Andrew Davies invented a scene in which Mr. Darcy takes off his coat and waistcoat and dives into the lake on his estate. Afterward, a visibly wet Darcy encounters Elizabeth Bennet, the woman he loves but who has recently rejected his proposal. Awkwardness ensues. At the time of airing, this scene was immensely popular, to put it mildly. Watch parties were held for fans to watch it over and over. Think pieces debated the accuracy of the lake dive in Mr. Darcy's costuming. Fan fiction was written, lots of it. Though Mr. Darcy never gets near any body of water in the original novel, the scene from the 1995 miniseries became so embedded in the minds of fans and the public alike that the lake dive became a recognizable symbol of pride and prejudice. In 2013, a giant 16-foot Mr. Darcy statue was built and erected in various locations around England, including Hyde Park and Lime Park, where the fictional Pemberley was filmed. The statue would eventually go on a world tour to Australia. Note the size of the swimmer in the image for the frame of reference of just how big this thing is. The white shirt worn by Colin Firth in the filming of The Lake Dive similarly went on tour, appearing in the Will and Jane Shakespeare Austin and the Cult of Celebrity exhibit in 2016, as well as going on display in the Jane Austen house in Chawton in 2022. Nearly 30 years after the airing of the BBC miniseries, think pieces continued to be written about the lake dive and Darcy's white shirt. In 2015, actor Benedict Cumberbatch recreated the scene to raise money for cancer. Belfast Lyric Theatre Company's Pride and Prejudice, the musical, had its lead actor, Neil McDermott, pose an advertisement for their production. In 2008, the miniseries Lost in Austin also had the actor playing Mr. Darcy, Elliot Cowan, reenact the lake dive for his modern heroine, Amanda Price. These productions most overtly call back to the lake dive, but other Pride and Prejudice adaptations pay a similar tribute. In the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, Matthew McFadden does not dive into a lake, but in his most emotionally vulnerable scene in the film, he appears dressed in a billowing trench coat and a damp white shirt. In the 2016 Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, actor Sam Riley, playing Mr. Darcy, dives into the lake in a white shirt, intercut with the scene of Elizabeth reading his letter as he explains his feelings for her. And in my novel, The Portraits of Pemberley, Darcy is the captain of the swim team and puts on a damp white shirt to talk to Lizzie. Shameless self-promotion! It's not only Pride and Prejudice adaptations that recreate the lake dive and or the wet white shirt. Other period dramas have followed suit, and the lake dive moment often occurs at a time when the hero is his most emotionally vulnerable. Popular period dramas such as Sanditon, Poldark, and Grantchester all feature their heroes plunging into bodies of water as the hero thinks about the heroine, or as the heroine awkwardly encounters him in a state of undress. Season 1 of Bridgerton features Daphne and Simon getting caught in the rain as they become amorous, and Simon strips down to, you guessed it, his wet white shirt. Season 2 is even more on the nose as Antony falls into a lake and has to hoist himself out of the water in his wet white shirt while heroine Kate Sharma looks on appreciatively. Last but not least, in the 2005 film Love Actually, actor Colin Firth recreates his famous lake dive by once again stripping down to his white shirt and jumping into a lake. This time, Firth is comedically reenacting his career-making scene by tripping and falling into the water and complaining about the cold, rather than being sexy and brooding. But the homage being made is plain, especially since Firth played Mr. Darcy again in the early 2000 film series, Bridget Jones's Diary. The films follow the novels written by Helen Fielding, which loosely follow the plots of Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion. In Fielding's second novel, Bridget Jones interviews the actor Colin Firth and bungles it by continuously asking him about the lake dive scene, instead of asking him serious questions about his latest project. In the deleted scenes of the film, Firth gamely plays himself in the same interview, even though he also plays Mr. Darcy in the movie. I'm sure there are also other tributes to the lake dive scene that I have not included here. Please let me know in the comments. I would love to see them, for purely scientific purposes. 
The lake dive and the wet white shirt do not appear anywhere in the pages of Austen's novel, yet they have become recognizable visual symbols of Pride and Prejudice, Mr. Darcy, and the emotional vulnerability of the period drama hero. The wet white shirt scene almost always occurs at a moment of romantic catharsis in which the hero bears himself physically and metaphorically to the heroine. It is also important to note that, for the heroine of the period drama and the largely female audience watching, the water dive and wet white shirt additionally invite the female gaze. Ideas surrounding the female gaze are nuanced and complex, but some theorists, such as author and academic Paula Morantz Cohen, suggest that the female gaze is not based solely on reversing the gender positions of the film's object and subject. It isn't just the concept of women subjects desiring a male body as an object, but it often includes other factors, such as material possessions. A scene highlighting the female gaze might not include a male body at all, but might rather focus on clothing, a beautiful home or location, or other material goods. For example, if we think of the female gaze in the film Pretty Woman, we might think of the beautiful clothes that Vivian gets to wear, the luxurious hotel in which she gets to stay, in addition to the handsome man falling in love with her. While this might seem to be a superficial focus for desire, centering on wealth and physical, tangible goods, keep in mind that historically, women have had to take many factors into consideration in pursuing a marriage. Physical attraction to one's partner could not be the primary focus. His financial security and ability to provide for a woman and her family had to be taken into equal account. While male desire could often afford to center on physicality, female desire had to more practically encompass materiality as well. While it might also seem to be gender normative to break down desire into these categories, it's also important to note that these are broad stereotypes that have been critiqued and challenged and satirized, and rightfully so. However, since exploration of female desire is still a relatively new and subversive act, usually relegated to women's literature and traditionally feminine genres such as the rom-com and period drama, it feels important to make these distinctions. In the Pride and Prejudice miniseries, the lake dive scene can be said to capture the female gaze, not only for Colin Firth's presence, but also for the shots of the beautiful estate and the white shirt itself, which all play a role in building up the desire implied within the scene. Elizabeth sees Darcy in his most vulnerable state, not just because he is wet, but because he is dressed down, exposed, and in his most natural surroundings in Pemberley which all shape the kind of person he is and Elizabeth's increased understanding of him. While this sequence is not taken directly from the book, Austen's novel does play with the idea of female desire being tied to objects. The militia officers stationed at Meryton are distinguished by their red coats, which set them apart from the other gentlemen and make them particular objects of desire to the young girls in town. As Mrs. Bennet recollects, I remember the time when I liked red coat myself very well, and indeed, so I do still at my heart. Even before this, the very first line of the novel reminds us, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a fortune must be in want of a wife. Enlisting the desirable qualities of an ideal suitor, he must first be free to marry, followed closely by the money he owns. Before the Bennet sisters get to meet Mr. Bingley, what they know of him is that he is single and looking to buy property, indicating a good fortune. In chapter 3, they also spot him from a window and identify him based solely on his material possessions. They have the advantage of ascertaining from an upper window that he wore a blue coat and rode a black horse. While they know little of Bingley, from this they can additionally gather that he is a gentleman, that he's fashionable, and that he's in good health, able to travel on horseback. Darcy's clothing is not described much throughout the book, but we do learn a great deal about another of his physical possessions, his estate, Pemberley. Elizabeth jokes that her love for Darcy was inspired by seeing his family home. It has been coming on so gradually that I hardly know when it began, but I believe it must date from my first seeing his beautiful grounds at Pemberley. At least, we assume this is a joke. I will leave that up to the readers to debate in the comments. Later, though, Mrs. Bennet is certainly not joking when she changes her dislike of Mr. Darcy to ardent admiration once she thinks through what material possessions Lizzie will gain by becoming his wife. 
Oh, my sweetest Lizzie, how rich and how great you will be. What pin money, what jewels, what carriages you will have. Such a charming man, so handsome, so tall. Oh, my dear Lizzie, a house in town, everything that is charming. Three daughters married, 10,000 a year. Even though the leg dive scene and wet white shirt might not appear in Austen's original novel, the sequence pays tribute to Austen's subtle exploration of female desire. What causes it? what sustains it, and how it differs from the traditionally masculine perspective found in most novels from her time. It is only fitting, then, that Pride and Prejudice adaptations and other period dramas continue the tradition of the wet white shirt as an expression of the female gaze.